mean or and VRSI is basically to motivate all the diabetologists and physicians to develop some in-house facility where they can screen their diabetic patients for diabetic retinopathy. And if they find any changes, then they can subsequently refer these patients to an ophthalmologist or to a retina specialist for further management. So I think this is the entire collaboration. The main aim and objective of the entire collaboration between the two societies is that we are able to spread awareness amongst the physicians and diabetologists that they will have to play a role in screening their patients for DR and subsequently do a timely referral to an ophthalmologist or a retina specialist for further management of DR to avoid a permanent loss of vision. So I think, Raja, I think this sets the context of the entire uh, meeting today, and I think you can then take it forward. Sure. Thank you so much, uh, Manisha. And uh, you have given a very nice introduction or overview, but uh, I'm sure there may be questions from the audience as well as even I have uh, some pointers or questions. But I'll just, I'll just share this uh, article which was published uh, led by dr manisha uh, it it is uh, it was published in january and it's as you can see it's a collaborative work between uh, rssd and vrsi it apart from the context setting what i would say that the more important uh, or if someone wants to just get a brief overview uh, then you can look at the tables and figures which are very, very uh, concise and also are kind of self-sufficient in what the message overall that has to be given in uh, patients who need to be screened for diabetic retinopathy. And this table here uh, uh, is very simple. When to screen a patient of diabetes, as you can see here, type 1, type 2, and pregnancy, and if there is no DR, what to do? If there is any DR, what to do? And here, we have kept it simple in a way that if there is any evidence of diabetic retinopathy, there is no need for the physician to start grading uh, uh, the severity of diabetic retinopathy. You just have to directly refer to an ophthalmologist if there is any diabetic retinopathy. That's the beauty or simplicity of this uh, screening guideline which has been prepared. And also there are there is a mention about uh, different cameras. Sorry for this uh, uh, you know landscape uh, print here, but uh, overall this. Uh, guideline publication gives a uh, lot of uh, fundus camera options which are available but very importantly there are now cameras available which have artificial intelligence capability which will make the diagnosis easy at the physician level because uh, earlier what was happening was that even if physician wanted to have a fundus camera uh, but they found it very difficult to either capture or uh, make a diagnosis whether there is diabetic retinopathy or not. But now AI enabled cameras which are non midriatic you don't need to dilate the fundus of the patient. And they actually uh, make the thing very easy for the physician and uh, diabetologist in terms of... Uh, um, the screening as well as the referral. Now, there is also the option of uh, teleophthalmology or teleconsultation. And we have also mentioned about uh, uh, the PMJ or Aishman Bharat program where screening can be reimbursed. That has also been mentioned uh, in this uh, overall document. Uh, I would request all who are in the care of patients with diabetes um, or who come across patients with diabetes to go through this uh, guideline document which was published in the International Journal of Di Diabetes in Developing Countries. We can in fact post a link in the chat box here 
so that you can go through this in more detail. Um, Nilima, uh, sorry, Raja, I had made some slides, but I thought that I'll show them subsequently. But since oh, really? you wanted to share the article, uh, that's absolutely fine. I didn't. Pro I so, hope I didn't uh, show all that you wanted. No, no, that's absolutely good. I think you've shared the article, so that says it all. Uh, okay, so, but uh, Nilima, has Dr. Sanjay joined? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Okay, let me just... Stop sharing here. So I think one uh, one important thing which has been highlighted in this article is that you have a lot of options available in the market today in terms of the fundus cameras, which are, uh, you know, very easily you can learn how to capture the images. And uh, they are both, uh, AI, they are uh, having AI-based softwares where the patient, you can give the report within a minute of the status of the retina and the status of diabetic retinopathy. So you really don't need to, for screening purpose, you really don't need to have an ophthalmologist on board or you don't need to send the images to another center for them to give you the report because any patient expects that the report comes in their hand immediately. So it's more like raising an alarm that the patient is starting to have changes of DR and needs to have a you know checkup a detailed checkup by an ophthalmologist. And also like uh, the Ayushman Bharat now has included uh, they have started reimbursing for screening of DR, both by physicians and ophthalmologists. It has become applicable in a few states, but it is uh, due for uh, getting implemented in the other states. So we are hopeful that, uh, you know, this implementation is going to cover more and more states in the near future. Yeah, so I, I was just talking to Dr. Sanjay. He's just joining. He had some net issues also, but... I would, uh, I mean, other than, sorry, other than the uh, collaborative work for which we'll wait for Dr. Sanjay to also join, I would like uh, Dr. Manisha to say in her own words actually how much she's doing in terms of uh, patient education, awareness. Uh, so many activities are being done by VRSI, including radio campaigns and uh, Tata 1MG. So, Manisha, I, I would personally love to hear the Tata 1MG story again, which you have been spearheading, but anything else also you can add. So, uh, Raja, I'll just briefly describe, we are doing a lot of activities on behalf of VRSI. Of course, Tata 1MG was uh, one of the campaigns that we conducted with them. Uh, because they have a very huge database of diabetic patients who are regularly ordering medicines online. Uh, and, uh, you know, that is why I felt that if they are able to collaborate with us, so we collaborated with Tata 1MG where any diabetic patient who was ordering medicines, a small pamphlet was put in their package, uh, making them aware of diabetic retinopathy and the potential loss of vision that they can have if they don't get themselves screened from DR. <coughs> and also one sticker was put uh, on the top of the pack so that in case they miss seeing the pamphlet, sometimes you can just throw it, but you cannot open the pack till you have not broken that sticker. So there was a very good response we got uh, by Tata 1MG and they you know, were very happy. Also, they have a few retail shops where they had displayed these standees and posters uh, spreading awareness of diabetic retinopathy. Other than that, something very important what we are planning to do is that along with RSSDI, okay, we are planning to conduct a full one year, a okay. countrywide diabetic retinopathy screening program where we are planning to divide the whole of the country into zones. And this is again going to be spearheaded both by the members of VRSI and RSSDI. And uh, it's, it's being planned. Let's see when it gets implemented. We also very regularly have these radio campaigns, uh, especially they get activated during the month of November when we celebrate the World Diabetic 
day on 14th of November. And uh, other than that, we have also formulated a kind of an atlas. Uh, four or five people have come together, four or five agencies have come together. It was actually to be released during AIOS, but apparently it got a little delayed. But we hopefully, so this is this is the sticker we have, this is the pamphlet actually we are putting inside the package of Tata 1MG. And uh, you see it has a scanner code. If you scan this, it is going to take you to the VRSI website. And a VRSI website then carries a patient portal is there, where if you say I am from so-and-so city, it is going to give you a drop down and the list of the retina specialists who are available in that particular city. And then you can get your eyes screened or get your eyes treated by one of the retina specialists in your city. So the purpose of giving the scanning code on the sticker is that, and you see the logo of both Tata 1MG and VRSI. And it also conveys a very crisp message that you have to check yearly to see clearly. So that is the, uh, the campaign logo of what we are using for all the diabetic patients. We have also collaborated with one of the pharma companies who are really helping us in formulating uh, patient awareness posters. And any physician, any diabetologist who's interested in putting those posters in their patient waiting areas can approach them, they, they will get it printed and supply it to that person, that uh, physician, and they can Hi. put them in their Hi, everybody. Sorry. Hi, Hi Dr. Sanjay. So sorry. Uh, no problem. Good to have you amongst us. Yeah. Welcome, Dr. Sanjay. So, Dr. Sanjay is, uh, again, for diabetologists, he needs uh, no introduction, uh, but he's uh, been a good friend and excellent collaborator. I've known Thank him you. for the last few years. And he has always been forthcoming for VRSI's work in terms of uh, retinopathy and any collaboration. So, once you meet Dr. Sanjay, you will always know that he's there for the patient and for the overall uh, good of our uh, patients who have retinopathy. He is also the honorary general secretary of the RSSDI. Um, but yeah, sorry, Manisha. Uh, before we start further discussions, I would like you to finish your points. Yeah. Thank you, Raja, and good to see you, Doctor Sanjay. Pleasure is mine. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you, sir. So that is another endeavor we have done where we have formulated these patient awareness posters, which are very easily available. And uh, I was talking of an atlas, which we are planning to come out, which is very pictorial. It is giving various stages of diabetic retinopathy. And also along with that, in that atlas, we are providing all the current guidelines, which are available, whether for an ophthalmologist or for a diabetologist or a physician. They are all being compiled into a very easy uh, to use atlas, which can be uh, available on the desk of everybody and can be referred to whenever you are dealing with a patient of diabetes. So these are a few things which are in pipeline and hopefully they are going to help us in spreading awareness of diabetic retinopathy. Yeah, thanks, uh, Manisha. So, Dr. Sanjay, just to recap what we have discussed so far is the uh, uh, a brief overview of RSSDI, VRSI guidelines for diabetic retinopathy screening. Uh, we also mentioned about uh, diabetes. I mean, India being the capital of diabetes and diabetic retinopathy is asymptomatic in, till the very last stages, actually. So, that's why... Uh, screening at the level of diabetologists and physician becomes very important to reduce the burden of blindness among diabetic patients. And also, we uh, had Dr. Manisha speak about various initiatives by VRSI, okay. uh, including the Tata 1MG uh, initiative, where patients who have diabetes order online diabetes medicines, uh, they get that uh, QR code. Uh, we, along with the information on diabetes uh, can cause blindness and diabetic retinopathy. Um, so with that context, I would like to start a kind of a conversation. And I had actually shown uh, the publication 
of RSS, DI, and VRS. I would like to show that again here and then bring in some of my questions and then we can take the uh, questions from the audience as well. So um, I would like to uh, start off with actually Dr. Manisha herself. So Manisha, we have seen so many guidelines for diabetic retinopathy screening. Uh, this is not the first time. But uh, what do you think is different in this guideline versus the other guidelines? And why do you uh, think uh, that this will have a lot more impact and, uh, you know, in taking care of the patients with diabetic retinopathy? So thank you, Raja. I think that's a very important question. Uh, if you see and compare these guidelines with any of the DR screening guidelines published earlier, they were all for ophthalmologists, whether it was general ophthalmologists, whether it was for retina specialists. It was a collaborative work between BRSI and AIOS. But I think this is the first time where we have a collaborative screening guidelines between the largest body of physicians, uh, RSSDI and VRSI. So that itself speaks volumes of these guidelines. Also, we need to understand that an ophthalmologist is very well geared up or educated about diabetic retinopathy. While what we are here trying to convey is or make the screening guidelines is for physicians who are basically dealing with diabetes, metabolic control of diabetic patients, but not really focusing on screening or managing DR. So these screening guidelines are basically a very simple language written screening guidelines for any physician or diabetologist to follow and also motivating them to develop an in-house system in their own clinics, how they can screen their own diabetic patients for diabetic retinopathy without really bothering to refer them to an ophthalmologist for the purpose of screening. And therefore, it is going to be having a much, much higher impact and a much higher compliance rate for DR screening. So I think these guidelines is first of their kind where physicians and ophthalmologists have come together to formulate guidelines in a very simple language which can be followed by any physician. And that's how it makes it different. Yeah, thank you so much, Marisha. And we all actually probably feel the same, but I would like to hear Dr. Sanjay. Um, for us as ophthalmologists, retina specialists, I think this was the first of a kind of a collaboration that I have seen, but I would like to know your thoughts. Like you may be collaborating with cardiologists, nephrologists. Um, how was your experience uh, uh, collaborating with the retina society? And also, uh, what challenges you probably faced in coming up with these kind of guidelines? Thank you, Raja. I think, uh, first of all, congratulations. And I think uh, most of the hard work has been done by VRSI and the group. Uh, you, Manisha, have really put an incredible amount of work behind these guidelines. And I'm sure that all of us are excited to see how we can implement them. I think today we have to learn to do interspeciality uh, collaborations because gone are the time when we feel that we are good in individual silos and we don't need to bother about other organ systems. We know that diabetes is something that affects everything. And unless we are collaborating to see how each one of us can put in efforts to bring the best possible treatment forward, we're not going to make any headway. Uh, second thing is, uh, realistically speaking, we are not really well equipped to look at the fundoscope and the eyes and what to do next. I mean, uh, some of us are trained, but most of us are not trained. And I think rather than just do a you know, shoddy job, it is best left to the vitro-retinal people to uh, have a look at the eyes and guide us. Now, the, realistically speaking, it is very difficult that every patient can go there. And we need to have a mechanism by which we can filter out the high risk or the people at risk who for retinopathy who should be following up with you and you know ensuring that they get the proper treatment so towards that these guidelines are extremely useful to identify the subgroup of people that are going to require your attention most and who are the people who could probably you know we could just manage at our level itself 
And with all the AI based cameras that are available now, it makes the job a little more easier and uh, probably more focused. And people who come to you would probably have a high sort of, you know, pickup rate. Uh, considering the fact that we would have run certain algorithms to see that do they have a possibility of retinopathy or not. So I think eyes remain an important segment and we need to make people aware about it. Uh, I'm certain that, you know, most of the physicians don't sort of go through this process of retinopathy screening in their patients with diabetes. And we, both those societies need to work aggressively towards it to make uh, doctors recognize the importance of retinopathy screening. But I think we need to go to the larger population of people with diabetes and educate them that, you know, they should insist on their doctor looking at their retinas and uh, for every patient with diabetes. Because unless the pressure comes from the patient, the doctor may or may not, you know, go forwards on getting the retinopathy screening. Also, sometimes it's a pushback from the patient that he's not willing to go and get an eye checkup done because he feels it's not required to be done. So I think it has to be an education at both the levels that we should be looking at. And I think the guidelines have come out very well, very simplistic, very understandable, and probably implementable also. And it's time that both the bodies sat down together and probably drafted a roadmap ahead to see how we can, uh, you know, bring this into the you know, implementation of doing the actual job with patients out there. So I, th I think let's sit down. You, you have a great society full of, you know, people who are enthusiastic and so do we. I'm sure we should be able to find out a way by which we can work together. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Sanjay. I think uh, while you mentioned VRSA uh, had done a lot of groundwork, I would say RSS SDI has been very accommodative and collaborative as well. Um, I just want to uh, ask Dr. Sanjay, what is the general feedback from your society doctors on these guidelines and are they upbeat and uh, how many of, I mean, what is the sense from those uh, doctors, uh, whether they would be willing to start uh, more and more screening in their clinics? So, uh, Rajat, I think people have li liked the guidelines, all right, but uh, I would also uh, sort of come around and say that a lot of people don't read them, and I think it's time to educate them. I'm just being very, very realistic in saying I would be sort of wrong of the card to say that everybody would have read the guidelines and said, okay, and I can do it tomorrow. Uh, majority of us who are academically inclined tend to read it. But most of the people don't go through the guidelines and they just save it on their computers or probably would be happy to possess one. But we should be sort of having a plan B that we should take it to them and have probably workshops in different conferences, go individual places and talk about it through a workshop manner or a CME manner and have them sit down and understand, you know, in a stepwise manner how to go about it. So I think just publishing is just one part of the whole thing, but that doesn't get you to your objective. We need to work and put it more on the ground realities. That's what we have been doing from RSSD and now, because we do recognize that just publishing is not good enough. I think you have to go and teach them how to do it. And uh, we, go, uh, for example, our national guidelines, in a span of two years, we did almost to the tune of about 450 CMEs all across the country and ensure that people sat down and looked at the slide set, which had portions of the guidelines, important portion of the guidelines. And then we give them a copy of the guidelines, they go back and read the rest of it. But you need to make them sit down and learn what is there in the guideline. So don't leave it to them and think that, you know, they will read it. Majority of the people don't do any reading. So that's the realistic figure. No, that, that's a very important point you have made, Dr. Sanjay. In fact, one of my... Uh, later question was about this is publication enough and if not what next but I'll come to it again but in the meanwhile if uh, anyone in the audience has any questions they can uh, post it in the chat box or in fact they can unmute and ask also in between if they have any questions. Uh, my other question to you Dr. Sanjay was uh, what are the challenges in screening in the sense when you said one is the knowledge about when to screen, but this is more than just knowledge sharing. Uh, how to screen is also there because a lot of expectation 
now is that a screening will happen at the diabetologist level. I know AI can solve some of the problems or challenges which are being faced earlier, but what are the other challenges being faced by the diabetologist uh, which need to be solved before this is scaled up? See, the thing is, uh, first of all is, of course, educating the doctors to say that you have to do it, right? It's, it's mandatory that you do every patient with diabetes or retinopathy screening. And we now recognize that patients with type 2 diabetes don't have to wait for four or five years before retinopathy surface. It can happen even at the time of diagnosis. So every patient who has a diagnosis of type 2 should be going through a periodic or annual uh, retinopathy screening. And people who have got presence, then of course, you decide whether it has to be three monthly, six monthly, or whatever frequency that they require. Second thing is you have to make people aware through various social media, print media, TV media, whatever way that retinopathy screening is one way of preventing blindness and you have to do it regularly. So you have to go to your doctor and find out about it. Three is uh, you have to probably, I'm not very sure whether people will learn how to use an ophthalmoscope. That's a very major issue. And so uh, having people training an ophthalmoscope probably is very, very difficult for you. But maybe we can put the pressure on the fundus camera companies and say that, you know, can you bring down the cost, which will be more affordable, and maybe have, you know, uh, different stakeholders, probably station cameras in different places who can visit clinic with their cameras periodically and say, pull your patients and, you know, we will bring the camera, handheld camera, and do the screening for you. So, you know, there are availability of some cameras and somebody can carry that around. Then you can do pool patients in different clinics and, you know, do a retinopathy screening if that feasibility can be worked out. And uh, lastly, of course, I think we need to identify good retino uh, retinal specialists around the area, wherever you practice and say, look, please help us out by sending the patients you know, in time and not delaying it before they realize that, a lot of vision has already got lost. So I think the doctor in this whole thing, um, you know, a physician in this whole thing uh, has very limited role in the sense that he should recognize when he should be doing, I mean, he should recognize the important screening and two, of course, pushing the patient to see either he has a fundus camera, he can do it himself or he can send a local retinal specialist out there at least once, you know, do, uh, immediately after diagnosis to say that, okay, do you have a problem or you don't have the problem? I don't see too many capabilities in people doing by a handheld ophthalmoscope retinal screening because they would just not be equipped to do it. So, so Manisha, would you like to chip in here in terms of the ease of screening at a diabetologist level? Uh, it, it, there are many cameras which probably are automated even in capturing. We also have non midriatic cameras. Do you want to share your thoughts uh, how easy uh, it has or easier it has become in the recent past to take a photograph in, in a non ophthalmology setup? So before Raja, I answer this question, I would just like to add to something what Dr. Sanjay said that I agree that, you know, the step one has been that we have published these guidelines, but I think more important would be to implement them. And I think we are already working. I'm sure Dr. Sanjay is aware of it, that we are working on stage two now, where we are planning to do a kind of a countrywide screening program involving the diabetologists, where we want to give them a feel of these fundus cameras. And that's where because sometimes there is a kind of a mindset that these fundus cameras are very difficult to deal with. How will we develop that kind of a technology or the training skills would be required. Here we are going to be walking into the clinics of the diabetologists, giving them a free trial of these fundus cameras, which are very easy to handle in today's time. And I'm sure that once we get them a hands-on feel of these cameras, I think we would be able to motivate them much more in really pitching into diabetic retinopathy screening and developing a system of their own in their own respective clinics. So I think that is going to be a very major step forward 
in implementing them, implementing diabetic retinopathy screening at various clinics of physicians. As far as the fundus cameras are concerned, I think they are becoming easier and easier with the developing technology. And we have both midriatic and non-midriatic cameras. I think the quality of images, of course, is much better in the midriatic uh, fundus cameras. But of course, uh, if somebody is not very keen to develop or use a midriatic camera, the non-midriatic cameras are also available. Uh, once the images are captured, you have AI softwares available within the cameras, which are able to generate at least this much, they would be able to tell you whether you are dealing with a patient with or without diabetic retinopathy and whether he needs a referral to an ophthalmologist or not for further management. And you do have cameras which may not be having an AI software. Then subsequently, you can always have a tie-up with an ophthalmologist where through a telescreening, you can transfer the images and get back a report which may take about a few hours. But I think in today's time, with the development of technology, these cameras are very easy to uh, use and they are very easy to capture images and they are a sustainable model. I would say that it's a sustainable model which any physician can have in their clinic and they can very easily do a DR screening in their own clinics without referring them to any eye specialist. Yeah, thanks, Manisha. So... The other people whom I would like to acknowledge here this time on DR screening guidelines who are at the forefront is Dr. Rajiv Raman from Shankar Netrale as well as Dr. Padmaja from LV Prasad Institute. And they have done tremendous work in this field, including educating so many people on how to detect and grade diabetic retinopathy. Uh, one other question I have for uh, Manisha is, uh, is, is VRSA working on uh, a kind of a database which can be accessed by patients as well as physicians to see where is the nearest referral center for patients with retinal diseases, including diabetic retinopathy? Is that being planned at this time? Uh, it is at a very nascent stage, I would say, uh, Raja. But yes, that is where the uh, the only thing we have been able to inculcate in our VRSI website as of now is a patient portal, which gives us information about diabetic retinopathy. And uh, you are able to locate the nearest retina specialist who is a VRSI member in their own city. And... Uh, these can a QR code is being provided on all the posters, on all the pamphlets, and like you just now showed the Tata 1MG pamphlet also, where if any patient scans that QR code, you are it takes you to the VRSI website, and if you go to the patient portal over there, you are able to locate a retina specialist nearby where you can undergo a complete examination. Very nice. So that Tata 1MG with QR code, I think is a very good, innovative idea, I would say. Um, there are some questions in the chat box. One is uh, by Dr. Brijesh Tucker, my colleague at LB Prasad Institute. So he is asking a question whether vision screening should be performed at the physician level for diabetic patients. I would like to have Dr. Sanjay comment on this. The feasibility and probably maybe some diabetologists are doing it probably, but how can we scale it and what are the challenges on checking the vision, screening the vision itself at the physician level? So you need to see, for us, it's very difficult because vision screening and all this, we are not equipped to do it. So we need to have optometrists, you know, who can at least do it because not all uh, centers may have eye specialists as such. So even if you have optometrists who would, you know, work with us, but these are all challenges. I, I mean, honestly, most of us would prefer to just send it to an ophthalm clinic and have them do everything rather than do it at our centers because we would really not be able to take action on it. So even if we do a vision screening of that kind, you know, rest of it still at the end of the day would have the decisions would have to be taken by the eye specialist. So rather than do half jobs over here where we are doing some of the things and then, you know, doing rest of the things at your level, it is best that, you know, we just send the patients to you 
and uh, let them let you guys do everything possible yeah, you know, these are hard realities and i agree with the challenges already faced at specialist level to take care of the already existing load but uh, we have some softwares apps coming up like the peak visual equity testing, which actually could be self-administered by the patient themselves. They can themselves check their eyesight on the mobile phone and in an app. Uh, and they can also be told either as an AI or it could be an education that you need to see an ophthalmologist. But I think at some point, we need to scale up the vision screening as well. But a if good these point. certain apps are present, then you know you should educate because we're really not aware about all these. You know, so yeah. maybe you should have a directive to say, what uh, I think it's a good idea that you need to have a three level approach where level one is what the patients can do at their level and find out that you know these are the things that I can do at my level. If I have something which is abnormal, then who should I report to? Should I report to the diabetologist or the ophthalmologist? Right? So that should be a level A screening that what level, what can be done at the patient at his level, and what are the tools available for him to do that screening. Level two is, of course, at the physician level, what he can do at his level. And what are the tools available for him and how does he interpret and what are the action taken that needs to be done? So that would be a level two. And level three is, of course, the highest level where it, the patient straight away comes to you and you do everything possible. And when is it time for somebody to report to you? It shouldn't be too late or too early or shouldn't increase your workload with unnecessary you know, visits as such. So I think you need to have a three-level program by which you empower people to do it themselves and give them the tools how to go about it and when should be sort of you know our, uh, our approach to say that this is the time now you need to go and see a eye specialist as such well, very well put across dr sanjay in terms of categorizations um we have the last few questions actually one is from dr sheetal uh, patel and uh, she is from patients engage and she has a question, I think, which was partly addressed by Dr. Sanjay also actually earlier in terms of, uh, you know, how information should be given to the patients with diabetes by their endocrinologists, making them aware it's it's ongoing, it's happening in, in uh, not a, a complete foolproof way, but uh, more and more education events are being held. Uh, but is there anything else, Dr. Sanjay, that you would like to add in terms of uh, educating? No I, think, no, I think I've put in everything. I would just repeating myself, but I think uh, whatever I've said would be good enough from our perspective uh, when it comes to, you know, doctor or the patient handling as such. Yeah, and VRSI can also help in more, you know, uh, such... Uh, education programs, CMEs, where uh, at least uh, in a webinar fashion or in your state level society conferences, if more and more joint collaborative education sessions are conducted, I think that would be very useful. Um, and one of the last uh, questions probably here is, I would put it across to Dr. Manisha here, are there obstacles to screening in the affordability? Is there any way uh, this can be reimbursed under PMJ scheme? So, Manisha, you have any thoughts on this? I think, Raja, you are the best person to answer this because you have really worked hard for the Ayushman Bharat scheme. So, why don't you answer this question? Yeah, so in this, uh, I would say that it's already included in the PMJ scheme, Dr. Sheetal. Uh, diabetic retinopathy screening um, and uh, I would say that that was one of the important steps that had to be taken in terms of the challenge of affordability. Otherwise, even if we have all these guidelines and manufacturers, industry, if nobody is paying for these tests and patients themselves are unwilling to come for these tests and pay for it, it will be a very big challenge. But I would say diabetic retinopathy is the only screening kind of test in the entire Aishman Bharat, which has been included as a screening test. So it's already there and we hope to see more and more uptake of uh, DR screening. And this screening reimbursement is not just for ophthalmologists, it's even at the physician level, endocrinologist level. So anybody can use the cameras as well as uh, claim reimbursement from Aishman Bharat. Um, 
are there any other questions from the audience you can unmute uh, i just wanted to add one thing that when we were talking of including vision screening at the level of physicians uh, i really don't think that as far as diabetic retinopathy or in relation to diabetic retinopathy is concerned that is very relevant because what we have been really trying to get across the message is that you can have diabetic retinopathy without having any impact on vision. So despite a patient having a 6-6 or a 100% vision, may still be having changes of diabetic retinopathy. So once the patient starts having any visual problem, they in any case decide to go to an eye specialist and get their eyes checked or they go to an optical shop. But what we are really trying to, you know, spread the awareness about is that despite you not having any vision problem, please get your retina checked. And that should be done at the level of the physician clinic, because that is your first primary caretaker. And therefore, we are telling the physicians or requesting the physicians to develop it in-house, because these are the patients who will be suffering from DR, not having any visual complaint, but still can be caught at that level and referred to an ophthalmologist for further management. So that is why I feel for physicians, it's more important to have a DR screening model rather than having something to you know check their vision. Yeah, thank you, Manisha. That's an important point that diabetic retinopathy screening by itself should be done irrespective of uh, what the vision is. Um, and there are other challenges in testing the vision. Hopefully, we can overcome with some of the newer apps. They need to be tested more, uh, but even a patient may be able to screen their own vision at some point of time. But I think uh, that's all the questions that we had today, and it was uh, great to have Dr. Manisha and Dr. Sanjay join us and uh, take us through the... Uh, RSSDI, VRSI guidelines, which were developed together. It was a great collaborative effort, I would say. And not an easy thing, looked very easy, but uh, it was because of the leadership. And uh, also we discussed about various challenges about DR screening, uh, the challenges, and it's more uh, than just education. Even at the implementation level, uh, we need to do a lot more. Uh, and Dr. Manisha spoke about VRSI's efforts in educating the patients as well, the Tata 1MG program that has been initiated by her. And uh, very importantly, Dr. Sanjay actually mentioned that there's a lot more to do. And uh, I would request both Dr. Manisha and Dr. Sanjay to uh, get together and see how we can improve the level of uh, DR screening, scale it up further at the diabetologist physician level in the coming year. But I'm sure that, uh, you know, they would do a great job. Uh, thank you all so much. Thank you, Dr. Sanjay, Dr. Manisha. Uh, thank you to all the audience for joining us today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us on the show. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Raja. Thank you, Raja. Bye. Bye-bye. Dr. Raza, you can end the meeting as you are the host. Okay, okay.